All right, this is the exam tab. And again, I've got a lot of fields that are duplicated on multiple tabs. I've got the acuity fields and the preliminary fields from the refraction tab. And I've got the blood pressure height weight fields from the medical history tab. So usually if a patient's coming in for just an office visit, I can go to this tab and enter their acuities, do the preliminaries, and everything right on this tab. I use these buttons when I'm doing the pressure. If I do the eye care tonometry, I click this button. It fills in eye care, the current time, and sets the cursor on OD. If this one has got a reading in it, then it puts it in the second field. So then I can just put in the pressures. If I hit it again, it puts it over to IOP2 because IOP1 is full. And if I change it and I hit Goldman, it puts Goldman the time, puts it in the right eye, and it also adds fluoresce here under the drops. And I've got the eye color, put something in here. Okay, it appends the color and flat to the iris. So if there's something already in there, it adds that at the end of it. It doesn't overwrite it. These I use to indicate the drops that I'm putting in. This is medriacil, phenylephrine, alkane. It puts the time. Since these all dilate the patient, it fills in these five fields saying that I did an optic nerve evaluation, retinal evaluation, puts in binocular indirect for exam, and the lens, this button clears it. For pachymetry, if I click this, it puts the current date in there. So this button opens up the iScape software, which isn't going to open up here, and checks photos. Then if I'm taking a photo today, I click here to put the current date on. If they had a photo before, this information is filled in from the history buttons, and that'll be checked with whatever this field was last time. All of my exam buttons only fill in data if the field is empty. Okay, so I'm going to put test in a couple of places just so that you can see what happens. Previous OD pulls in the previous right eye fields for the anterior segment if it's empty. So where I had test and test it leaves that alone. Also all the previous and all else normal buttons set the mood affect and orientation to the default values if they're empty. Anterior segment all else normal will fill in both eyes, but since the right eye is filled, it's not going to change that. And again, where I have test, here I had blue flat, it doesn't overwrite that. So typically on a new patient, I'll go in and fill in anything that's not a default value, and then when I'm done, I just click all else normal to fill those in. This clears the anterior segment fields, and again, if I do all else normal now, it puts all the default values. And same thing on posterior segment, if I hit previous OD, it fills in everything with the previous values, but it leaves test alone. And all else normal fills in the defaults for these, and then clear clears out everything for the posterior segment. These buttons are to enter CDs. If I click one of these buttons here, it puts that value in all four values, horizontal and vertical, right eye and left eye. Then if I put 0.5 on the left side, it adds 0.5 to each one. And every time you click on it, it adds 0.5. The buttons on this side only affect the left eye readings. Say I have 1.3, 0.35, 0.4. All of the yellow text boxes contain error fields. And on my template, all of those are the actual error fields, except for the CD. The reason for that is it was hard to have the button working with the actual error fields, and the numeric fields are hard to deal with. However, linking doesn't always work, or sometimes if you change them, it, the update doesn't take hold. So I place the actual error fields on the template but down below so that I could hopefully catch it if there's a difference and come down and fix the values on the actual error fields. These arrow buttons copy whatever is in this field on the left side over to the right side. So if I put test and hit an arrow, it copies it over to the left eye. Let me clear this out now. I'm going to put in numbers to make this quicker. And let's put test, test, test. All right, this go to left if empty button copies data from the right eye to the left eye if the left is empty. I thought it was really clever at the time, but I actually don't use it. But to show you how it works, I hit the button. You can see test and test were unchanged. It copied over the 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, whatever, over to the left eye when the values were empty on the left eye. 
the plus buttons are to help me remember to code something in diagnosis. If I've got, say, our PSC and uh, it's something new, I can hit plus on the A&P tab. It puts that under the new diagnosis. So then when I'm coding things, I remember to put that code in there. This field is also pulled forward when the patient comes in the next time and we do previous ocular history. It adds that item to their other ocular history field. So it gets it set in future information that I have that listed for things that are already going on. And next up is the A&P tab. I reorganized the layout of this from my older template to help with printing of medical records. I actually don't like the layout quite as much, but if I ever have to print the medical records in PDF, it looks a lot nicer. So I just finalized a spectacle prescription and contact lens prescription. Over here, I can do one of two things for the refractive status. I can calculate it, and I believe it just looks at the right eye. If it's minus in the sphere, it says it's myopia. If it's plus, it has hyperopia. If there's a cylinder value, it says astigmatism. If there's an add, it says presbyopia. It's not perfect, but it works for most things. So let me clear this out. If I calculate it, I don't put it in the codes, and then I can use these buttons to add diagnosis codes if I want. So I don't have a jillion diagnosis codes. The other option is to just hit these buttons, but the first button you hit puts in refractive status and diagnosis. The next time you hit it, it goes just to the diagnosis. And that has to do with conflicts between the, how the calculation button works and how these buttons work. All right, then down here I have common diagnosis codes and patient instructions. So say they have cataracts, I click that, it puts in default language, and if I have a couple different combinations, I put a bunch of X's in there so that I can see that I need to choose one. I just delete whichever one I don't want. It's got patient instructions, patient education, it checks the education provided box, and it has a default value of 12 months and puts cataracts in there. If I have something else in here, put six months. it doesn't overwrite this. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to put diabetes. It enters the diabetes diagnosis code and it runs the diabetes report button and puts in that I'm sending a report with findings and severity and it inserts pending and diabetes report so that I know that I need to do a report for that patient. It didn't overwrite the RTC because I had something in there before. Some of these have defaults and some don't, so you just have to kind of keep an eye on it. I mean, also, this no diabetic retinopathy button hits no DME, grade none, and puts that no and none on this field. So you can see these in either location. The referral button checks that you transferred the patient out and that you provided a CCD. It also puts pending in the referral field, so I know that I need to do a referral report. When I get the report in, I check this box here. These are other error boxes. If I come to the A&P tab and these have not been finalized, I can finalize with these buttons here. Find ICD-10, that links to the icddata.com website if you're looking for a code. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with these buttons with ICD-10. They're all linked to ICD-9 codes and it's not really possible to switch them to ICD-10 because you know too many different possibilities. I might take out the codes and just leave in the other information. Or you can use this ICD-10 convert button. This is set for ICD-9, so I can't put an ICD-10 code in there. But I believe when I checked before, it lists the whole list of codes, whether they're ICD-9 or ICD-10. But if you know they're an ICD-9, because it's just a number, you can click on that, and Crystal tries to come up with the options that you can choose for that. These X buttons clear out this line item and push up the previous one. So let me. Let me put a bunch of stuff in there just to fill them in. Okay, so if I click this, it moves keratitis and pinguicula up. If I click this one, it moves everything up. These are standard instructions that I want to give to patients, like adaptation to glasses, tapering extractions, recommended artificial tears. These are related to uploading medical records for meaningful use. This opens up the billing history. This one clears the, the bill codes. These are shortcuts for doing billing. We've got new patient codes here, existing patient codes, contact lens codes, and testing. So I can do a new patient comprehensive exam. It does the 92004. 
and the refraction. When I click the fields button, it appends visual fields into the order field. It puts pending in the fields report status, so I know I need to do an interpretation and report. And it enters a default visual field test on the fields tab. Same thing for photos. It does the photos, puts pending, and puts photos in the order. And the last one is Word. If I refer a patient, I put my doctor's names and fax numbers in my F9s for referral. So if I select one, that also copies down links into the referral pending field. And then I've got Word templates, and it'll pull up a Word doc with information filled in there. Then I just do this. We put in there appointment information and save that, print it. I think that's got that covered. So next we'll go to the summary tab. I've just packed in almost everything from an exam. I made it smaller size so I can go to one tab and kind of get a visual overview of what's going on with the patient and make sure I've got everything filled in. This is the photos tab. It has the default type already entered by the photo billing button, but you still have to manually enter data on that tab so that you can access it in the future. Previous pulls forward previous values into any fields that are empty. Clear clears all the fields. And Done changes the photo status field on the A&P tab to Done. Same thing for visual fields. I've got three extras for like OCT or pechymetry or things like that. Then I've got an Rx tab that I use for patients that they're having a problem with their glasses. I can bring in their previous spectacle Rx1, Rx2. I can bring in lens meter data from Marco. This brings in the subjective Rx off the Marco. This has got data in it because these are the same fields that are used for subjective and final Rx and everything on the refraction tab. And the treatment is the same as the A&P treatment tab. So that's why that, that information is in there. Typically, if they're coming in for an Rx check, that's all they're doing and all these fields are empty. Got a procedure tab. Again, these are the same fields that are on the A&P tab, so that, that data is filled in from when we were on that. But you can put in procedure information. I've got a binocular vision tab that has a bunch of uh, fields for binocular vision and accommodation testing. I've got a glaucoma tab that has fields specific for glaucoma patients. So they're just coming in for IOP and fields. I can do that. These buttons have to be customized for each tab because it tells the cursor to go to this position and this position is different than it needs to be if you're doing the pressures on the exam tab or the post-op tab. All these are similar buttons to what we've got on other tabs. And I've got a post-op tab. That's basically the exam tab, but I've got post-op information and I put in the AR fields and AK fields because I might want to have that information accessible when I'm doing a post-op. The last tab is the full records tab. This is my attempt to get a better medical records output than we get with the print PDF method. I copied all the exam data fields onto the full records tab and I laid them out in a logical order optimized for printing. But I put the less common fields at the end. So I've got all the exam, the assessment plan, and then, then I put contact lens information since a lot of patients don't wear contacts. Then I did interpretation report, special glaucoma fields, minor procedures, post-op, and binocular vision at the end. Unfortunately, I haven't used it because the font size on the printout is microscopic and increasing the font size in the template fields doesn't increase the font size on the printout unless I make them huge and then you can't read anything on the template. Also, there's currently no way to automate the upload of a single tab to the patient portal. So for anyone doing meaningful use, it's going to be harder to get the data up to the website. I've kept it in my template because I put a lot of work into it, and I'm hoping that at some point in time this will be an option to get us better medical records. I originally added this tab a year ago and put all the fields on there. Once I realized that I couldn't get a good print output, I stopped working on it, and I just left the fields there. They were scattered around and weren't lined up and things like that. So I, I have spent the past week lining everything up and I also added some new fields that were added related to meaningful use too that weren't on there originally. If you want to use this to print out records, you'd first have to edit your medical record template and make the full records tab a summary tab because typically you're not inputting data on this tab. So it's not going to show up if you look at past medical records unless it's designated as a summary tab. And I believe that will only have that tab active going forward from when you start using the template with that designated as a summary tab. So just keep that in mind. And that wraps up the demo of my template. If you have any questions, you can 
message me through the Crystal Forums on MDI Doc. Thank you.